Imagine an island so secluded there's no power, no paved roads, and no plumbing in most cases either. A place hundreds of feral sheep roam free, where money isn't always necessary, and conventional rules don't really apply. This island, you may be surprised to learn, lies a mere 90 kilometers from Vancouver and is home to some 400 people year-round. It's called Laskiti. Never heard of it? Until recently, neither had we. That's why we traveled there last month to get a sense of what it really means to live off the grid. We were warned before we left port that heading to Laskiti was like stepping back in time. An island only an hour by boat from Vancouver Island, safeguarded by giant cedars, rocky outcrops, and an aversion by some to outsiders. Its size is often compared to Manhattan's, but as it turned out, a comparison to New York couldn't stand in starker contrast. Here, city indulgences are left behind, most notably, power. The entire island is off the grid. On more than one occasion, BC Hydro has approached the islanders, offering to install it. But there's a general feeling here that power, in the conventional sense, would destroy their treasured way of life. All right, just up here to the summit, and we have arrived at the yurt. That way of life is what drew Jerry Chicalo here seven years ago with only a bag full of clothes and a mountain bike. So what is all this? Ah, oh, we got some kale, we got some lettuce, different greens are growing here. I try not to get any food from, you know, off island. Jerry doesn't carry any money or keys and barters for anything he needs, often by trading firewood or doing odd jobs. Microwave? No. Toaster? No. Blow dryer? No. TV? No. Do you miss any of the above? No, I don't. So what is this? So here's my one solar panel. What power he does use comes this? from a small set of solar panels and a gas generator. Believe it or not, this swamp here is the jewel of the 10 acres. Jerry's property is a cluster of outbuildings, including the shed he sleeps in. So this is the winter sleeping quarters slash internet center. And his outdoor shower. So in the middle of winter when you want to shower, you have to walk through the forest for it? That's right, to get to the shower. In snow, in rain. Yeah, I take an umbrella. Everything's hot, hot water, hot air. I'm not sold, Jerry, I'm not sold. <laughs> well, you'll have to try it first, then you <laughs> yeah. will be sold. Take your word for the it. Butterflies are flapping and the birds are chirping. <laughs> All right. Are there people who come here thinking that they can tough it out, that they can live off the grid, that quickly learn, mm -mm, not for them? Yes, there is. Uh, I would say there's probably less than a 40% success rate here. People come, get all excited, maybe even buy land. A couple of years later, it's just all too much. They just don't have the skills and they leave. But not everyone on the Skeety has to hike through the forest to get to a toilet. The engineering of some homes here is so impressive, it's created a buzz, like the Earthship. Yes, that's what it's called, owned by a family from Alberta. Jerry is the caretaker. So by comparison to the yurt where you're living right now, this is the entire other end of the spectrum. That is true. The Earth ship is made of natural and recycled materials. Its walls built from old tires. Its power coming from the sun. Water circulates underneath this dirt here so you can garden right here. You'd be hard pressed to realize this home is off the grid. There are lights, bathtubs, fridges and flat screens. Wow, you're not wanting for anything here. I mean, yeah, well, some people have electric everything here. Of course, there is a dual philosophy on the Skeety. Some believe moving here is about translating city life to the island, while others insist it's about abandoning the unnecessary. And then there are those like Al Gainsbauer, 83 years old, and when we caught up with him, chopping firewood in his front yard. I was just gonna rest now and have lunch. 
was an engineer in Vancouver when in 1989 his boss wouldn't give him the summer off. So he quit and has lived on Laskidi ever since. If I had known I'd have guests coming, I would have made my bed. He lives here by himself in complete contentment. Home-baked bread. I baked it this morning. Three loaves, how do you like that? Warmed by two wood stoves. It's a serious piece of metal. How did you get that here? Sailboat. Sailboat? Yeah. And his homemade plum wine. Oh, I like that one. The home, two stories, three rooms, he built himself. All by hand, from scratch. I just always wanted to live out in the woods. It even has two bathtubs. I'll show you my uh, outside bathtub. So you make a fire around the tub, so you underneath. heat the actual tub. Yeah, that's the tub. Underneath, I make the fire. Oh, you should see me in there. I've made myself a little board. I have a glass of wine on it. And I do my laundry when I'm in the bathtub. <laughs> hey, it's very organized. And while I'm sitting there drinking my wine, I just work the laundry. Yeah. On his roof, a row of solar panels that power his place in the summer, while down in the creek, a hydro turbine supplies enough energy for the winter. So this is it. So when I turn it on, I'll turn it on, okay? So what do you do for drinking water? Uh, I use water from a creek up the hill. How do you know if it's and safe? How do I know if it's safe? I've been drinking it for 30 years, so can't be too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Al's wise enough to know he needs to get off the island at times. Usually, he says, when he starts talking to himself. Or well, if I argue with myself and I can't win the argument, I know I have to go over for a couple of days. But he always comes back to the waiting arms of the forest and the serenity that can only be found on the Skeety. on 16 by 9. Into pets? Okay! Try taking this pack for a stroll. on the Skeety who would like to keep their little island a secret. An oasis of individuals where oddities are embraced, even celebrated. The community page here boasts there is very little industry and no bustling economy. They like it this way. There is one pub with its set of regulars, one cafe that sends you off with organic brew and a hug, and the free store where you can pick up odds and ends for free. The one thing that comes in abundance here is feral sheep. No one really knows how many run wild, but it's guessed around a thousand. That might make Tiki Smith's animal collection seem paltry by comparison. Still, when we met her, we couldn't believe it. Of dogs. Tiki has 42 St. Bernards. So you know them all by name? Yes. All of them? Oh, yeah. Which one's this one? That's Gala. Which one's this one? Zena. This is? Bella. <laughs> she's a breeder who's so in love with the slobbering, panting, trampling dogs, she's kept one from every litter. And, well, it adds up. <laughs> Up until today, I was clean, relatively speaking. No longer clean. There are dogs everywhere. <laughs> dogs everywhere. Tiki is a magnet for the dogs, a pack leader followed everywhere she goes, except, as it turned out, by this guy. After running up and down the forest, he simply seemed to have had enough. Come on. Equally adorable.
adorable Tiki's newborn baby Arlen, strapped to her chest for the entire trek. So your four-month-old son slept the entire way? Oh, yes. The dogs don't bother him? Oh, no. I think they're music to him. <laughs> Arlen was born, much like his mother, right here on Laskidi. But the timing of his arrival was rather sudden. And so Tiki gave birth at home with only her two-year-old son, Niall, at her side. No help, no nurse, no midwife, no doctor. No, there was no time for anybody to get here. <laughs> Tiki's husband, Jacob, also grew up on Laskidi. They both went to school here, and together their life involves raising two boys and more than 40 giant dogs. The beauty of Laskidi, lush forest and rippling waters, betrays the hard work required to live here. Put three days a week aside for chopping firewood alone, and there's not a lot of lounging time left. One might think that would discourage many from moving here, especially city girls like Stacy Hogan. I am the last person that anyone in my family or my friends know that would ever live this kind of a lifestyle. But ask her today, six years after arriving, and she'll tell you there's nowhere else she'd rather be. This is our dining room, kitchen, eating area. And this is our bedroom, all in one room. They live and work here. Stacy at the pub, her common-law husband Darcy on the barge. What was the biggest sacrifice in moving here? I could answer that quickly. What? Well, I think. Indoor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, indoor, yeah. Indoor, plumbing. Indoor, indoor plumbing. It took me a long time <laughs> to get used to that. When you live in the city, you don't just see somebody having a pee over there. And, <laughs> and we're, that's the way it is here. And, and I had a really tough time with that. Their life is a blend of forest living and urban luxuries. An outdoor shower lies not far from their washing machine. A satellite dish is placed beside solar panels. And in between the toaster, iPod charger, and coffee grinder, you'll find the one thing Stacy couldn't give up. <laughs> it's not that life here is cheaper, or in Stacy and Darcy's case, all that more environmentally friendly. It's just freer. It's like, you know, the, the land that time forgot or something like mm -hmm. that. It's e easy just to block it all out and, and live your life here. And not worry about, you know, whether uh, Iran's building a nuclear weapon and, you know, somebody's going to come after them for it. Um, you just kind of go, okay, well, it's kind of like some reading a fictional novel. Really? They do that? They do that, yeah. No, so. yeah. On Laskidi, life is governed by the wind and the sea, by whether it rains and whether the creek will power your turbine, by the things you can't plan for and wouldn't want to, anyhow. How long do you see yourselves living on this island? I think I'll, I'll be taken off of the box. <laughs> Hopefully not soon. <laughs> it is an island defined not so much by a lack of power, but by its collection of characters. Where even stragglers are always welcome back into the pack. Next on 16 by 9, could this Canadian teach the Scots a thing or two about referendums? Do you think people know the tension that they're in for? I think as a Canadian, I, I have an idea. 